As we head into late September, here's a fishing report for Lake of the Ozarks. It's courtesy of Tackle HD and brought to you by Jack Uxa from Jack's Guide Service at Lake of the Ozarks. Hey everybody, it's Jack Uxa here with the Lake of the Ozarks Fishing Report. Um, it's it's mid-September now, going into the end of September, and I'm going to be talking about the Big Bass Bash too, because that's going to be a little early this year. It's October 1st and 2nd. It's, uh, it's, it's coming up. So, um, fishing's been all over the place, man. I've had some really tough days. I've had some really good days. Uh, today was one of the good days. Uh, we had some cloud cover and some wind, and, you know, that they were biting because of that. They've been liking weather lately. You know, if, you, if it's um, uh, flat, calm, and sunny, and warm, they haven't been as active, and you gotta be really be able to pitch. Uh, some of my customers can pitch, some of them cannot. Uh, Pitching is one of those things where, you know, it's it's uh, it's hard for people to pick up. You know, if, if you've lived your life, uh, you know, and and you've never really pitched very much, it's it's I don't know, it's it's just difficult for people to get a swing of, and for other people, it's just um, no big deal. And you know, for me, living on Lake of the Ozarks, it's something we do a whole lot of, uh, particularly in the fall of the year. Um, and make no doubt about it, it is definitely fall. The, the shatter in the back of the coast, thick. Uh, there's some places that you pull into that, you know, it's, it looks like you could pretty much walk on the shad. Um, water's been clear. Uh, lake level has fallen quite a bit. They've dropped it about two feet. Um, you know, the, the majority of the fish, I'll say, are about halfway to three quarters of the way back in the coves. There are some fish that are all the way back in the coves. Uh, the main lake bite, uh, particularly on the deeper points has been getting harder and harder um, you know it's just all signs of, of of the fall really really I mean just at times you gotta move fast and cover a lot of ground to find them and then once you find them then you can slow down and you could get a nice little group of them going um, but there's a lot of dead water there's a lot of areas that are really tough and you'll be able to catch some small fish but the bigger fish are kind of looks like they're in little groups you can find one hot dock and catch two or three or four off of it uh, and then you know catch some other fish around there and do all right and then you know you can go a while without catching much so they've been willing to chase lately uh, I've got a crankbait in my hand this is a Berkeley crankbait it was one of the Dredger 25.5s um, in a shad pattern this has been a great bait for some of my customers and uh, it gets a bigger bite they're on some deeper brush um, they're fun to catch um, you know this is something that's good if you if, if we're not pitching um, I'd say most of the fish we've been catching lately have been pitching um, this is a tackle HD sticks warm on a little jig head from e factor this is a quarter ounce jig head and uh, this is a great bait for pitching um, for whatever reason they're a little finicky right now they've been beaten up we've had you know a couple dozen tournaments here lately and um, you know they're sensitive they're sensitive to how that lure enters the water um you know we call it lure entry if you're making a big splash that's not okay you're, you're not going to catch anything with that um especially if they're in shallow water if they're in deep water it doesn't matter but um some people are careful about that some people are not careful about that so pay attention to how that lure is entering the water if you're making a big splash practice now because the big bass bash is just around the corner and a lot of other tournaments are just around the corner and you won't catch much with that. Um, so I, I've just been mixing it up. I mean, uh, a top water has been coming on. This is a Berkeley Chapo. Man, this is a great bait. You can cover a lot of ground with this, uh, especially early in the morning or at any time. Anytime you got some low light conditions. Uh, so if you get some a storm rolling in or something like that, you can just get on a rocky bank and and parallel it. Um, you know, there's some crank baits that you could you could get up shallow with. A, like a, a 1.5 uh, buzz baits are a great bait for the big bass bash uh, James Watson has that one great buzz bait um, it's a killer uh, you can throw that thing just about anywhere and it's got a great hook on it I don't lose a lot of fish on that bait and with all the shad that are so so active right now and so shallow at times right now the buzz bait is gonna be a big thing for you guys for the big bass bash um, I've also been throwing a big 10 inch worm or a 12 inch worm. Uh, this happens to be a Berkeley 10 inch worm. This is a plum color, but uh, I've also been throwing some of that June bug and the 12 inch worm. 
it's just something that you can get in the brush piles when I'm out a little bit deeper, say seven to 15 feet of water. And I've got a lot of shad in the area. And I know there's a brush pile in the middle of this pocket or this middle of this cove. Uh, that's been a big player for me. It's usually they're biting it on the first cast. And uh, when I'm just kind of in the back of a cove and I'm looking for some fish that are just roaming, uh, what I've been doing is taking this uh, the swimmer and cutting it down just a little bit because a lot of the shad are about this size. Hopefully you can see the, 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 the size here. Um, you know, this is just a real natural presentation. Um, something that anybody can throw. Uh, maybe not a great bait for the big bass bash, but if you're just looking to get some bites and catch some fish, uh, this has been a good bait for us. Um, there are some white bass that are starting to show up, not a lot. Um, but as we go through the rest of September into October, we're gonna start to see a lot of white bass moving back in those shallow coves. And this is a, this is a bait that's good for, say that one to four feet of water. Um, you know, that's, that's about it for my fishing report. I mean, it's been tough, but it hasn't been horrible. Like it's just, it's kind of day to day. Um, the crappie are getting a lot better. Um, I've been doing some more crappie trips and they've been doing fine. They still have been kind of a little on the finicky side. We've been, been using a fair amount of minnows with them. Uh, a lot of times I'll keep one rod with a jig that's made, able to go underneath the docks and we do, do some of that docks, dock shooting. Um, so that's been good. Um, and it kind of depends on who, who my customers are for the day. Uh, sometimes it's just better off to have minnows and just keep it easy. And you're not doing anything too fancy with the minnows. Because, uh, you know, you got to keep it pretty easy for those things. So otherwise you'll end up killing the minnow before it even gets into the sweet spot. So you got to keep it pretty easy with them. Uh, brush piles. Uh, a little bit shallower uh, than what I was doing a few weeks ago. I was going extra deep. Now I'm fishing all those brush piles about 15 feet. Um, I guess that's about it. I haven't been doing as much catfishing lately. Uh, I've been really focusing in on the bass and and you know practice your pitching skills as you get ready for uh, the big bass bash and the foreseeable future. We'll call it. Um, it's all about finding that right stretch of docks and then picking them apart. And you got to be pretty creative on where you're putting your bait um, because the you know there's times where you just throw it out the, uh, the outside corner and that works and uh, you know you catch an aggressive one that's out there feeding and then there's also, also times where you got to get way in there and I'm saying put the places that you're not supposed to be putting anything and you got a good chance of losing your fish and your lure that's where they're at so it makes it fun it makes it exciting when you get one on I've had customers uh, this past week say how are you going to get your lure back much less get a fish out of there and uh, you just make it happen you just set the hook you trust in your line you know on, on those kind of rods i've got 17 pound test a 20 pound test and um you know you, you lose some but you win some and uh it's exciting when it happens and and there's plenty of other fish that are roaming around and feeding on bait fish and you'll see them uh when you get into the right area you'll see them chasing some shad so it's uh it's it's gonna get better. These warm days are not a big, not a good thing. I refer to warm days in the fall, similar to what most people refer to as a cold day in the spring. Um, in the spring, generally speaking, the fish like warm days and they, they wanna be moving shallow and they want that water temperature to warm up. In the fall, it's kind of the opposite. Uh, they prefer to have some cold days, they prefer to have some weather, some clouds and some, some wind and some cooler, cooler days. But you gotta fish with, uh, with the conditions for whenever you're out there. And, uh, you know, anyways, well, good luck to everybody. And uh, if you're looking for a guide trip or uh, if I could help you, uh, you know, uh, clue you into an area or, or help fish a certain part of the lake, uh, give me a call. My phone number is 573 434 2570. Thanks.